This is Caps PA announcer Wes Johnson, and you're listening to Book the Pod. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new edition of What the Puck. It is a Washington Capitals podcast, which means it's a podcast about your 2018 Stanley Cup champions. Thank you all for listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player.fm, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook, and YouTube. The Caps are doing, you know, pretty well in this regular season. They are really flying and and just playing on all cylinders. This is fantastic to see. Lots of games to talk about. Coach Dan, he's joining me once again to talk all about it. What's going on, Coach Dan? How you doing? Uh, I'm not doing too bad. Got a little bit of a cold, but I'll power through. How you doing? I think you sound good. Nothing to worry thank about. You, thank you. Got my cup of tea here, ready to go. Oh, and, and a Halloween in a Halloween mug. Yep. Nightmare Before skeleton. Christmas. Mm-hmm. All right, so is uh, Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween or a Christmas movie? It's both. It's both. You think it's a hybrid? You can watch it at both. Okay. All right. I'm sticking to it. Hey, we're not here to talk about uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. We're here to talk about some Caps hockey. Yeah. And- yeah, there were a couple games to talk about since we spoke last, but I think we really got to talk about that Ottawa Senators game. That was quite the wild game. It had ups, it had downs, it had, you know, near misses that the Caps might let it all slip away. You have a hat trick by TJ Oshie. Uh, it was the first trip to Canada in over 20 months. Uh, that one was was one for the, the, the record books. I mean, that was kind of crazy. This game was just wild and in, in typical caps fashion it had you on the edge of your seat the whole time mm-hmm. i mean it was uh i think when you're when you score a touchdown and you still only win by two goals something's not quite right right like you're still missing something i think defensively i think goaltending wise the team could have been better uh but you know it's nice to see that the offense can pick it up and get them a win when they you know may not have deserved it uh, I will say we did see Sam Sonoff. He was in during this Ottawa Senators game. I don't I don't want to put the blame completely on him, but one or two of those goals were a little bit soft. I think that he probably could have gotten, especially that first goal of the game, he should have been able to get that one. And uh, I think that might be why we've seen VTech play a, a couple more games than, than Sammy. We're still very early in this season. Uh, it's still very much a battle, but it was uh, – I didn't think Sammy had the best – night against Ottawa no I you know that was it's a weird game and you know hopefully he can come out and play a bit better but when you give up five goals clearly something didn't go according to plan so the fact they came out the win was pretty lucky but um Sam Sonoff is definitely you know that's one that he's gonna go and look at probably game film be like yeah probably could have done a bit better there could have done a bit better there I think you know the goalie's not the only one to necessarily look at in terms of the issues, I mean, you get on five goals, clearly someone else didn't do something right. The defense yeah. could have been a bit better. Yeah. So, you know, I think that game might just be one that you kind of look at and go, yep, that was just kind of a weird fluke game and an odd one, and we'll move on from it, and hopefully it doesn't happen too often. I, I think it was also the Capitals kind of realizing this Ottawa Senators team, they don't have a lot of experience, but that might actually kind of work in their favor. They're very fast, they're very young, and uh, they're willing to try things and do things a little bit differently than you would see an NHL team normally do. Well, I could say to an extent they might be a little bit comparable to the the Caps in the early era of the Young Guns, where they were just kind of trying to fly all over the ice and playing with a lot of energy, but not necessarily the way you need to be playing to get a win. Uh, so I think you can kind of make that comparison, you know, in terms of how this Ottawa team is going to play. They may not be the best, but they're going to go out there and they're going to you know fight for every inch of the ice. Now, one of the OG young guns, Alexander Ovechkin, he had himself quite a game, and uh, he, he's he's still racking up the, the the goals. Every time you see this guy, he's he's getting a goal. I don't think he's gone a game yet this season where he hasn't gotten a goal. He's looked absolutely fantastic. It's kind of scary that this guy is the same age as me, and he's flying down that ice. He was he was looking for that hat trick last night. He wanted that empty net. Uh, goal last night. Yeah, he, he was did. trying real hard. He was outpacing some of the young guys they have on Ottawa. <laughs> well, when you're chasing to have the most goals in hockey history or NHL history, uh, you know you're going to be able to push yourself just a little bit more. 
<laughs> are you are you surprised at how Ovechkin's doing his thing this year and and how many goals he's actually getting? No, I think by now we've learned to stop being surprised by Ovechkin. At least that's how I feel. Like I feel like it's why I, he's so much anymore. fun to watch still. Yeah, he's still going to go on to everything. You know, when he first came in the league and he was hitting everybody. They're like, well, he's only going to be able to play for a few years because his body's just going to break down. There's no way you can keep this up throughout his entire career. And then here we are, you know, starting to get towards the end of his career, and he's still playing with a ton of energy. He's not as quick as he used to be. He's not as fast, but he's still playing with a ton of energy. He still can score. Even though you know that shot's coming, he's still scoring on you. And I think that they – I think we're going to see this, and other teams are going to see this throughout the rest of his career. Now, a guy who's just starting out his career, we got to bring him up, Connor McMichael. He got his first NHL point, and uh, he got to play in Ottawa as well. And uh, we also saw Hendricks LaPierre in the same game as well. And this was a big game for a lot of these Canadian boys because, again, like we said, this is the first time the Capitals have traveled since, well, I guess technically they were in the bubble in Toronto uh, in June, but that was just really a vacation for those guys. Uh, this is the first time they've actually played some real regular season hockey since uh, uh, for 2020 20 or 21 months now at this point. But big deal for Henrik LaPierre, big deal for Connor McMichael and guys like Anthony Mantha that they actually got to play in an NHL game in front of their families. Yeah, I feel like anytime you get to play in front of your family, it's a big deal. And I feel like it gives you that little extra bit of juice when you're playing, you know? Because, like, when I was in high school, my I, I went to a, a small school, and we didn't have a football team, so our homecoming game was a soccer team. And that was a game I was always the most jacked up for, because I knew we were going to get more people to come and watch that game. And so I feel like playing in front of your, your family, it's got to give you a bit of extra energy. So to have that opportunity to not only play, but play well in front of them, is, it's got to be a special thing for them. And uh, what did you think of, I mean, the two guys, they're, they're linked. They're going to be linked for a couple more games i guess but Connor mcmichael hendrix lapierre they both were in that ottawa game which was uh, a little surprising because they've kind of been battling for the same spot but this team seems to be a little uh uh injury prone at the moment but uh did one guy do you feel like one guy had a better game than the other i felt like we saw hendrix lapierre kind of shine in that opener but in this game against ottawa it kind of showed that he's still he's still got a little bit to learn well, he's a young guy, and I, I don't think anyone was expecting him to necessarily come in and, and make the team and score in his first game. And Well, that first game to go as well as it did either way. So, uh, you know, I think that he's definitely, like we talked about, was it last week? He's definitely going to be going back down to his juniors team. I think it just makes complete sense. You know, they're they're he's kind of playing, have played in, what, three or four games now? So at some point they're going to have, obviously, in the next probably couple of weeks, they're going to have to make a decision in terms of what's best for him and his development, and I have to imagine that means going back to the minors. And while that probably won't be something that he will appreciate <laughs> or want to happen, I think it's the best thing for him developmentally because he's not going to be playing every night when this team is healthy. And as we're seeing, you know, McMichael's doing pretty well. I think he's the one that's going to be getting the sweater most nights. And you don't want LaPierre just sitting in the press box. Yeah, he might learn a bit being around some of the older guys, but he can do that next year or the year after. You know, I think I think for this year, it makes the most sense for him to be playing night in, night out, and he can be doing that da- uh, uh, up in up in the minors, down in the minors, because up technically it's <laughs> north of us. That's confusing. Um, so yeah, I think it's I think it's fine that Lapierre is eventually going to get sent down. You know, with Dowd out now and Backstrom still out, they need that center spot. But I have to imagine that when they send him down, they'll be able to pull someone up from Hershey. Is it a good sign? I mean, it, I mean, kind of has to be a good sign, right? That Backstrom's been out. He hasn't played any. He hasn't practiced at all. He hasn't done any of that. But the Caps are still finding ways to win. Of course. How, how when you do you look at it? You're expecting, you know, oh god, we're down this player, we're down this player, we're down this. You know, when you're looking, I mean, they'll have that many, but when you, you know, you lose players to free agency or trades, you lose someone uh, to an injury. You're thinking, I don't know, uh, you know, I, I, we're going to start losing. This is not good. We got to call someone up. Are we going to have an opportunity? Like, how's this going to work out? But the fact that you're down, you're you're number one, art, you know, arguably number one, number two center. You're down now. You're you're fourth line center who's been a great who has been part of a great line 
for this team, especially playing up against another team's top line. And maybe that's part of the reason that they gave up five goals. But I think that the way they're playing right now, losing those guys, it hasn't hurt them yet. And hopefully it won't. So I think it's definitely a good thing that we're seeing them still play well and kind of band together. And these two young players in McMichael and Lapierre are kind of filling in those gaps where they need someone to be. Um, you know, hopefully we don't have knock on wood. We don't have any more injuries before one of those guys comes back and we'll see. Cause they play what? Two Wednesday, today's Tuesday. They play Wednesday. Correct. So it will be interesting to see if Dowd plays on Wednesday. Did he practice today? Do they have practice today? I'm not positive. Probably should look that up. Probably. Mm, I'm going through. I don't see anything from Samantha Bell. They probably, you know what? They probably have a day off. So I think that having young guys is nice because it gives you an opportunity to see them and how they've been playing with these other guys out. And the fact that this team has not been hurt by it is just a bonus. How do you, I mean, of course, I mean, I'm not saying this. When Nick Backstrom comes out, Nick Backstrom's going to have a spot in this lineup. That's obvious. Yep. But how do you tell one of these younger guys who is playing really well and has really been showing off that, hey, you know, thanks for the thanks for the good games, but you're done now. Go back to Hershey. It's got <laughs> it's got to be a rough no conversation. Way. Yeah. Well, I don't think McMichael necessarily is going down. I think he'll get his games in, even when everyone is healthy. But I think Lapierre, just because you can send him to the minors, and the fact that he needs to be playing every night so he can continue his development, that it makes the most sense to send him down. And I think that's part of the art of the conversation with him when they just make this decision and when they actually decide to send him down. I think it's a conversation with him saying, this is the best thing for your development. We really are looking forward to you being part of this team next year or the year after that. When it, you know, I don't know how they're going to phrase it. But I would not at all be surprised if he's on the roster next year full-time. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised by that either. And do you think that the Caps are going to allow him to play at the World Juniors? Lapierre. They've blocked players. Yeah, LaPierre. They've blocked players before, like Andre Burakovsky. But, I mean, I think that was because they wanted him in Hershey. They wanted him getting that pro uh, experience at the AHL level. I don't With think La- LaPierre. Lapierre I-, LaPierre, I don't even think he can go to Hershey or he's no, eligible he's for young. it. So he's I going think, back to juniors. Yeah, so I think that we really could see him in, what, nine, eight weeks uh, playing for Team Canada. I, I mean, I anticipate that being the case. And I don't see any reason whatsoever that the Caps would not allow one of their prospects that's in the juniors go to the tournament. Now, you said uh, besides Nick Backstrom that uh, Nick Dowd is also hurt and he didn't play. Have they said, has there been any kind of news about what, uh, how this injury is going to affect him or if he's going to be missing more time? So yeah, he's day to day with a lower body injury. That's all we know. So, you know, he could be back the next game. Yeah. No, there's no updates at this point. Gotcha. Uh, One guy who has made an absolute impact, and it's been great to see, is, uh, of all people, Nick Jensen. Nick Jensen has been doing really well. He's got two two goals in a week. Uh, I think that uh, season with Zidane Chara has really helped improve his game. Well, I think playing with a first-time or first-ballot Hall of Famer, it can't hurt your game. Right. It's definitely going to improve your game. Is that why you're such a good podcaster now? Because you've been podcasting with me for so long? Is that it? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> that definitely doesn't line up, like, at all. <laughs> no, I think that, Jen, first of all, I have to eat a bit of crow here because I gave him so much crap over the last few years. We, you and I both have. I'll, I'll admit the same. So we, I definitely am like, you know, he's proved me wrong this season with the, his play, and I, I appreciate it because he's playing for the team I like, and I want him to play well. Uh, or if he's not playing well, to go away. But he's playing well, and I'll, <laughs> and I'll take it because they need him to be playing well and playing strong and 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 being a part of this team. And I think playing with Zidane Char last year definitely helped him because he's freaking Zidane Chara. Like, even if you're not playing on his line, you're going to learn things from him. Right. So the fact that he was on his line helps even more. So I think it was, you know, I think it was a good move. Even if it may have, like, I don't think it's stunted, but it pushed 
uh, you know, Favari maybe another season back, but that seems to be working out pretty well. So I don't really have any any issues with what went down. And I think the fact the fact that Jensen's still playing this well or playing this well so far this season is, is perfect. And, and Fevari, he already got his first goal of the year as well, didn't he? Yeah, he scored against uh, uh, Ottawa or the well, no, which game did they lose? Calgary. He was he beat up. Yeah, he got a goal against Calgary. He's a guy that I, I from what I understand, he's only twenty two years old. He's looked solid. I mean, it's no wonder that the Caps are like knew that they had to bring him up at this point, uh, so he can play at the pro level. He's doing absolutely fantastic. He looks great. Could not be more impressed with Martin Fedovari. I'm glad he's a. He, I'm glad he's on the uh, Caps team. I mean, I think we've been waiting to see this guy play in the NHL, and I think so far playing on a top pairing with Carlson has been incredibly beneficial for him. It's given him an opportunity to uh, really work on his game. In a, given his, he's playing against other teams' top lines. If you play with John Carlson, you're going to be playing in a good amount of minutes, and you're playing against good players. And I think he's definitely done – really well he's going to make mistakes he's a young guy and that's that's expected but i think the team is able to kind of with with maybe the exception in the game against ottawa he is someone that they need for the future Mm -hmm. you you know ideally he's gonna be a part of this organization for a long time and i think he's played well enough to have earned a roster spot and clearly the coaching staff agrees I think the fact that he got his first goal is great. It gives him a nice little, you know, push and a little bit of extra energy and hopefully he gets some more. Now looking forward till we talk again, there's going to be three games, Detroit, Arizona, and then the Tampa Bay Lightning. We're going to be down in Florida. Uh, like we said, there's only so many games. Hendrix Lapierre only has so many games he can play until he has to go back down to the juniors. Do you see them holding him out for any of these games? Like, do you, do they... Do you think he's ready to go up against the Tampa Bay Lightning again? Because he was up against them, what, the second game of the season. Is he ready to take on the Stanley Cup champions yet again? Or is that a game you kind of sit him out so you have him for a little bit longer of a time? Um, I mean, I think it's hard to say right now until we know if Dowd is back. Because if he's back, I think you play whichever between him or McMichael, whoever's playing better. Right. You know, I, I don't think you necessarily look at it and go, well, he played against them before. Let's try it again. I think you look at what's best for the team going forward. You know, that's my that's my thought on it. Well, anything else we should cover in Caps World? It seems like it's, it's kind of quick for us this time around, but really they're playing so well. There's nothing for us to gripe about. <laughs> We've said that before. We're like, when they play poorly, there's a lot more for us to discuss. Right. But when they're doing a good job, you're like, keep doing the thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Good stuff. Can we give a shout out? It's not caps necessarily related. Can we give a shout out to Ryan Drury? Our buddy Ryan, he got to call play by play. Yeah. Did you see that? That was pretty cool. I haven't gotten to like listen to it because is it available anywhere for us to listen to him doing play by play? I don't know. Let's let's tweet him. Let's see. All right. We'll come back to this in the, <laughs> during the show. Oh, did you see that they're giving away the stupid Tom Wilson? volleyball bobblehead tomorrow. I saw that. I kind of wanted to go go to the game now. I 100% don't want that. Nobody Why not? send me one. Send it, send me the one you're going to give to Dan. Yeah, if you someone if I get one, I will give it to Brandon. <laughs> Maybe. You know what? I don't know. It's just it, I don't know. It just seems so silly. Yeah, it's silly. That's why it's hilarious. That doesn't make any sense. He's a volleyball. No, I like, that like from that product. movie from twenty years ago. Okay, that movie is timeless. I you know, it's too silly for me. Could that movie drink at this point? Is that how old it is? I'm gonna have to look this away. up. I'm gonna have to look this up. Castaway was two thousand, so yep. No. Yeah. Uh mm, it's twenty twenty one. Come out? Yeah, but when did it come out? May oh. not be able to December seventh. No, it cannot drink yet. Oh, okay. It's coming up, but not yet. All right. See, so yeah, I think that that pretty much covers Capsule right now. I can't. I, I can't remember if we're forgetting anything, but keep it up. Keep playing well. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Before we get out of here, we do have to say congrats to Alexander Ovechkin. 
because he broke, uh, he, he got his 84th career multi goal road game by scoring twice against the Ottawa Senators. And that puts him past Wayne Gretzky for the most multi goal road games in NHL history at 84. So he's still playing. Gretzky only had 83. Ovi is going to surpass him by a lot more until Ovi retires. So good for good for the Alexander, the the goat, the Ovechkin. <laughs> he's yeah, he's pretty good at yeah, this hockey bad. thing. He's done well for himself. All right. Well, Ovechkin's still breaking records, but that that goal that he's searching for to break that that Gretzky record. And not just the multi-goal one on the road one, all time. Yeah. He's got his sights set, and you can feel it even at 36 years old. And the way that he's just zooming down the ice, he's got his sights set, and he wants that record. So, can't wait to see what you're going to do next, Ovi. It's going to be a blast. All right. So, uh, is that it for Caps World? Uh yeah. Let's let's keep going. All right. So that's it for uh, Caps World. Now let's go down on the farm. All right, everybody, here we go. We're going down on the farm. We are talking Hershey Bears, South Carolina Stingrays, and maybe even some Hershey Cubs. What's going on down on the farm, Coach Dan? Well, let's start in Hershey, where the Bears went 1-1 one and one with an overtime win over Charlotte. Nice little start to the season for them. They'll be back at it on Wednesday at the Giant Center against Syracuse before hosting back-to-back games at the Giant Center over the weekend against Cleveland. In other Bears news, the American Hockey League announced that former Bear and Washington Capitol, Keith Acoin, will be one of four people inducted into the AHL's Hall of Fame as part of their 2022 class. So congratulations to him. I was always a big Keith Acoin fan. I was a little bummed I he, liked didn't, him. Yeah, he didn't get to do more at the NHL level with the Caps. I, I always liked him a lot. I, uh, for, I don't know if he's him. quite the NHL player, but I feel like getting into the Hall of Fame at the AHL is still in a very impressive feat. Very much so. Congratulations, yeah. Keith Acoin. Down in South Carolina, the Stingrays are 1-0 and with a win over Greenville to get their season started. They'll be back at it on Saturday in Greenville before hosting those same Swamp Rabbits at the North Charleston Coliseum next Wednesday. This whole season, they're only playing Greenville. <laughs> Just back and forth. It's going to travel between the two. That's it. It's such a Whole boring season, uh, season there. They got. Just Greenville back. It's going to be real heated after a while. Let's head back up I-83 where the Hershey Cubs' Owen Dell has been selected as a member of Team Great Britain for the their U-20 squad for the IIHF U-20 World Championship in Romania. Great Britain will travel to Brasov for the six-team Division Two Group A competition from December 13th to the 19th. Here's that, the thing. Here's the thing with uh, the IIHF. I got to bring up. Can you add more letters and numbers to anything that you call a tournament? Yes. I mean, good lord, the IIHF U20 World Championship Division Two Group A, just presented by McDonald's. <laughs> Can you guys help us out here, please? Can we get <laughs> just a, can call we get it shorter? something else. Can we get something slightly shorter, please? <laughs> Just a, a little bit. No? Okay, never mind. But congrats to Owen Dell. We do have to say that. Congrats to the Hershey Cub. Good for him. Yeah, all joking aside, that's still pretty cool to be able to go and represent your country. But yeah, that's what's going on down on the farm. All right, good stuff going on. Congratulations, Keith the Coin. Go Bears. Go Stingrays. Go Cubs. Now let's go around the NHL. All right, here we go. We're going around the NHL, and Coach Dan and I were discussing before we recorded this podcast, we need to change the name of this segment. So if you guys are out there listening, shoot us some uh, suggestions on Facebook or Twitter, please, because we're bigger than just the NHL. We cover international hockey. The Olympics are coming up. We've got all kinds of stuff that we want to talk about, not just NHL. So what do we call it? Do we call this, you know, everyone's adding a plus to their title for streaming? Do we call this around the NHL plus? No. I don't know. I don't know. But here we go. We're going to go around, <laughs> around the NHL and beyond. So, Coach Dan, what's going on in the hockey world? 
if my son was here, he'd be so excited because that would just <laughs> sound like Buzz Lightyear. He'd be like, <gasps> I love that guy. Uh, before we get into the whole mess that is the Chicago Blackhawks right now, and oh my God, is that a mess? Yeah. Oh, and it's just, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Let's start with some women's hockey as Team USA and Team Canada met twice since our last show in the My Y Tour Rivalry Series. Now, this prepares them for the 2022 Olympics. Unfortunately, Canada won both of those games. Boo! <laughs> Taking Game 1, 3-1, to one, and Game 2, 3-2. to two. Hey, we got better in the second game. The Tour will continue with two games in November, one in December, and two in January. The Beijing Organizing Committee unveiled the design of the gold, silver, and bronze medals to be handed out at the Olympic Games beginning February 4th. The design includes five concentric rings radiating out from the center that contain the Olympic rings on the front and the Beijing logo on the back. Cloud and snow patterns are engraved within the deeply carved rings. The rings are reminiscent of designs found on ancient Chinese jade pendants. Jade was also used as an inlay on the medals of the 20, uh, 2008 Beijing Games. How come they got more? Can we have one, please? Thank you. The back of the medals also contains the medal winner's event. That makes sense. Along with the full Chinese name of the games. How big are these medals that they have this much crap on them? <laughs> like size of someone's head. They're going to go and put a medal on something. And all you're going to hear is as they like drop to the floor. The rings on the back are carved, because of course there's more. The rings on the back are carved with much shallower than the rings on the front. That makes sense. Scratch. Anyways. Uh, and they'll also be reminiscent of the ancient Chinese pendant. Uh, these are pretty cool. That just sounds like they're going to be really freaking heavy. Yeah. Uh, I don't care if anybody got suspended, no one got traded, and no one got uh, signed of any note. No offense to like the one dude that's got a new contract. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Holy crap. Who? What? You know what I think irritates... Not irritates me. Uh, has me as angry about this is that this was so avoidable from the beginning. If, like, one dude, just one of dude, was like, uh, I need to go talk to someone, like, the authorities, about this situation. Now, this is all alleged, although... Sounds like something went down. Uh, Brandon, you've been doing a little bit more research into this. I'm happy to go over my notes. Uh, would you like to take the lead on this one, or would you like me to go ahead? Oh, no, you go right ahead. <laughs> oh, you sent me the medals real quick. Oh, these are kind of cool. Uh, a little boring. Yeah, a little boring. That's what I was thinking. But you know what? I like them. I don't, I don't need some fancy pants medal. I'm also not going to get one because I'm not an Olympian. So here is my understanding of the situation at this time. And when you are listening to this podcast, there likely will be more things that have come out. But here's here's where we're at so far. During the and please correct me, Brandon, at any point if I go uh, if I give incorrect information, because I, I will do my best. There's so much coming out right now. We should. we Yeah, we should. By the way put this out there before we get into this this is a very big story a very serious story um coach dan and i we're not going to make jokes or anything about it at all but you know him and i we we have day jobs and we podcast as a hobby we have fun doing that so really if you want all of the information from the blackhawks uh investigation and the third party investigation the blacks all have released that if you would like to read through that Please do so to get all of the the absolutely correct and um, found out information. Coach Dan and I, we've we've kind of gone through news articles. We've uh, looked at tweets from different reporters like Stephen Wino and Greg Wazinski. We've we've looked into it. However, there could be a chance that we we missed something that we didn't hear about it or we didn't uh, we didn't read. It was included the article we read. So if you want to read the entire document yourself, it is available uh, and we do apologize if we get anything uh, misquoted. We should say that. Uh, but we've looked into it. We've we've done our research here. So hopefully 
that's not the case. But just in case you want the whole story, you want to read the whole article, the Blackhawks have put it up uh, on their social media accounts. It is available. So go ahead, Coach. <laughs> This is this is this is insane. So this was, I believe, during their 2010 Cup run. Correct. So my understanding is that a player went to their GM, Stan Bowman, uh, head coach Joel Quenville, uh, as well as a number of other people that are involved. Uh, 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 Stan Bowman was the, I believe, either was or uh, well now was, but at the time was the president of hockey operations. Assistant GM was there. Uh, he went to a bunch of people telling them that he was sexually assaulted by the video coach, whose name I'm not going to say because screw that guy, if this ends up being true. The complaint, I feel like, more or less went ignored. It took three weeks for anything to be done about it. And then the Blackhawks gave a recommendation for the video coach to go work at a school where he then allegedly went and sexually assaulted a student at the school. So now this unnamed player and this unnamed student are now suing the Blackhawks. Quenville, who's now head coach of the Florida Panthers, and assistant GM Kevin, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right, Shevel Dayoff, He's now the GM of the Winnipeg Jets. They were both told of the allegations and did nothing for three weeks before something happened. Or they handled this, quote unquote, handled the situation. However, both of them previously, either this year or, or in the recently, they've denied knowledge of a meeting ever taking place to discuss the video coach. The Blackhawks has now been fined $2 million for, and I quote, organizations, inadequate internal procedures, and insufficient and untimely response in the handling of matters related to former video coach, not saying his name, that person's employment with the club and ultimate departure in 2010. Now, Stan Bowman has resigned as GM and president of hockey operations of the Blackhawks, as well as his GM responsibilities of uh, hockey uh, team USA. Senior Vice President of Hockey Operations for the Blackhawks, Al McIsaac, he's also resigned. This is a monumentous mess. Gary Bettman, boo, like everybody does, uh, he plans to meet with Quenville and Cheville Day off, I'm guessing within the next few days, given they're in two different locations. Winnipeg and Florida, last time I checked, not too close to each other. So he has some traveling to do, or they're doing it over Zoom. I don't really know. But he's presently come out and said he is reserving judgment before he meets with both of them. But I don't see how either one of them keeps their job right now. If, if they were aware that this happened and did nothing before a cup run. I'm sorry, not before a cup run. Did nothing because of a cup run. That's horrible. In my mind. This is my opinion. I don't care what's happening. That's someone's life that has now been forever changed because one guy is an a-hole and couldn't behave himself. And the fact that they're like, well, and I think there's even reports out that Quenville didn't want to upset the team or distract it. Let me not upset, distract the team. I think is the word they're using during the cup run. I don't, I don't get it. It's it's a really disgusting and sad story that uh, it's been brewing for a while because there's, there have been rumblings ever since, I guess, June about this and that the Blackhawks are looking into it and... This was the investigation that an uh, independent company did, and, and this is what they found out. Like you said, I, I can't imagine the coach for the Panthers having a job after this. Um, as a coach, even though your players are adults, you're still seen as like a father figure almost. I, I mean, I would assume. I, I'm, not, I'm not on a professional team in my uh in my adulthood but when a player comes to you and says something like that you know you 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 do have to take those type of things seriously and i understand that the stanley cup is important and i understand that you worked all year probably your entire career to lift the stanley cup above your head uh 
whether you're the coach or the players or working in the front office and that kind of stuff. I understand it's important. Um, but when a player is um, strong enough and, and anybody, not just a player, but is strong enough and courageous enough to come forward because that had to be embarrassing for that player as well. Um, just because it's it, you're risking your career, you're you're risking your livelihood, you're risking all of that by coming forward and saying that. And then you've also got the the mental trauma that you have to live with the rest of your life. Um, because you're this player is probably looking back and going, "Why did I do it? Why did I do this? Why didn't I do this? Why?" Like you're always going to be questioning that, and it's it's incredibly difficult to read and it's incredibly difficult to follow this story because it is really heartbreaking in so many ways. Um, I, I I want to give the coach and the general manager and those people like the benefit of the doubt, because in their minds, they're probably like that guy. No, that video coach. No, he, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do that. You know, this guy's just because we don't know who the player is and it's their right to, to not have to come forward and talk about it, that kind of thing. But that, they're like that, that he's making that up. I understand how you can think that. But then you find out that this guy has a history of this type of behavior. He um, after this thing with the, the player, he also sexually harassed an intern. I mean, he had, there's a pattern to this. And um, I, I hope that. I want to word this. I, I, I want to word this the best way I, I can that is a terrible thing that happened inside the Blackhawks organization. It's a terrible thing that happened to this player, but I hope that the only good thing that can come out of this type of situation is for other sports leagues and other teams and other teammates and other coaches can look at this situation and go, yeah, that's not how you do things. Like, I really hope that that is something that comes out of this because as long as, as long as, as long as that people are looking at what's happening and going, let's not let that happen again. Uh, then that's a good thing for the league to kind of think about and to, for other players to, to look at the situation and go, yeah, let's not do that again because the players also on the Blackhawks shouldn't be taking um, out of this whole ring. I mean, I read in a couple articles that this player, after he did come forward was harassed by his teammates and made fun of. And um, you know, crude jokes towards their way. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a hard, hard, uh, harmful work environment at that point. That's bullying. Uh -huh. So this is a terrible thing. From what I understand, the Blackhawks have completely cleaned house. Anyone that was in that front office, uh, that was there in 2010 is no longer employed by them, but let's hope the NHL moving forward and other teams or other organizations too. the NHL, the NBA, the NFL, MLB, MLS, any any organization out there looks at this and goes, all right, this is an example of how not to do things. Let's not do this again. So let's let's hope moving forward that's the case. But it's been 11 years since this happened. And again, this is all legend. Um, this is we were not there. We don't have the facts. We don't know, you know who was right and who was wrong and all that kind of stuff. But to have what we do know is that there was a complaint made against this employee and they said, we can look into this or you can leave. And they left with a recommendation letter and that's how they got to work at a school. And then that's how they got to harass and assault other people. So you can't just kick the can down the road with something like this. You need to, as hard as it will be, you have to take this head on and figure out what's going on and you can't just make it somebody else's problem. It needs to be confronted and it took 11 years, but it seems like this problem is finally being confronted. I think the thing that I just, I can't quite understand is how they couldn't have one person look into this. Not one person could look into it and go, huh, this is wildly inappropriate. We should go do something about that. 
we're going to remove the video coach from being around this team. And then you allow him, not allow him, but you go and make a recommendation for him to work somewhere else? Are you kidding me? Uh, this is this is completely um, different than the situation that, that that's going through right now. But I don't know if you have Peacock, but there's a show on there called Doctor Death that Joshua Jackson is uh, is in, and it's a it's a real life story about a surgeon who was terrible at surgery and botched all of his surgeries that he had done. And instead of addressing the problem and taking away his license, he'd get fired from one uh, hospital. And then he would just get picked up at another hospital because he had a recommendation letter from the one before it. That's and this guy, plan. this guy maimed people. He cut off people's vocal cords because he didn't know what he was doing. He he made his best friend a quadriplegic because he medically decapitated him from the rest of his body. Uh, that's how bad of a surgeon this guy was. And I think that's what we're seeing here in a very different circumstance. It was like, OK, we have this harassment uh, against a player here and an intern we don't want to deal with it, but uh, here, go work at a school, and you're not our problem anymore. I, I, I don't really know if I have anything else to add <laughs> to this whole thing. It's just, I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand how nothing was done. Actually, the sad thing is, I'm not surprised. I am unfortunately not surprised that nothing was done. Mm, I don't know. I guess that kind of tells you how things were before. It's just disappointing. I don't know. I, you know, I hope the best for the people that were involved in terms of those that were assaulted, not and, and the worst for those that did the assaulting, and for those that you know had, played their part in not helping. Um, you deserve what's coming next. And just losing your job isn't enough because, you know, you don't have something that's going to sit with you for the rest of your life. Uh, that's my last take. Yeah. It's, um, it's unfortunate. It, it's more than unfortunate. It's uncalled for that something like this is happening. And, uh, Hopefully that player and that student and that intern and anyone else that this horrible person affected in a negative way uh, is getting help and is working through that PTSD that they're going through. And um, hopefully this opens the eyes up to a lot of other people that may be going through the same thing and uh, realizing that it's not OK what they're going through. And um, I don't know what else. It's it's just it's not okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, unfortunately, yeah. I don't have more to add at this point. It's just it's unfortunate. Not for it, it's just an easily avoidable situation. Uh, is that it for this episode of What the Puck? Oh, man. That title has never been more pre uh, on point than right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it for this week. All right, everybody. Well, if you would like to continue the conversation with Coach Dan or I, you can. It's real easy. All you have to do is tweet to either one of us. You can tweet to me at Brando Cash. Coach Dan, where can people tweet to you at? You can find me on Twitter at WTP Coach Dan talking all kinds of Capitals related stuff when I actually have an opportunity. Uh, all they're talking about Caps Hockey, Arsenal Football Club, won again today, 2 nothing over Leeds, continue in the League Cup or whatever the thing is called now, as well as talking about the Bills, best team in football, quiet Brandon, as well as Washington Football Team and how they are still a mess. 
with signs of building for the future, but that's, we'll see. Uh, I'll talk about other sports when I'm on there, but that's finding me on Twitter at WTP coach Dan, but if you enjoy the show, go ahead and check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash what the fuck pod. It's where we post when new shows are coming out as well as all sorts of other things related to the Washington capitals, Hershey bears, South Carolina stingrays, the Hershey Cubs. I need a t-shirt or a Jersey. We need to make this happen. Uh, as well as other things related to the NHL that Brandon finds funny. He will post them on there. That is, he's nodding, everybody. That's facebook.com slash what the puck pop. Brandon, if someone happens to like an inferior NFL team based out of Baltimore, uh, is there a podcast they should listen to? An inferior team? I don't do a show about the Bills, but anyway. Hey, he's got jokes. <laughs> Well, currently, uh, my other show, The Call, is about the Baltimore Ravens, and they are on a bye week this week. So our latest hey, show, too. we uh, we discuss the game against the Bengals, where this is not your your mama's Bengals. These are this is a different team. This is a scary team to face, and uh, Ravens got to face them twice every season, which that's that's going to be a tough one every single time so that's very good like coach dan said you can follow me on twitter as well and uh, you get to hear great tweets like this one if you don't watch the boy meets world episode which is a penbrook you're doing halloween season all wrong and you know what i stand by that statement and it's true i don't care i don't care what you think it's true it's a great episode great one i don't know which one you're talking about oh you're so you've got disney plus no i've watched boy meets world i don't know specifically which episode you're talking about it's the Halloween episode where Eric and uh, Jack get into a fight because DJ Tanner from the Full House uh, moves in next to them and turns out she's a witch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great okay. episode. Great episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, but anyway, check us out over on Facebook, like Coach Dan said. Uh, uh, maybe uh, Facebook will recognize our podcast, and you can listen to the podcast straight through Facebook. Still waiting for that to happen. But uh, we'll see if that ever happens. It happened for the call last week, which I was shocked about. But uh, what the puck might show up there eventually. Who knows? I'd be happy if it showed up this week. That'd be great. That'd be nice. Uh, but anyway, we do this show for free. You listen, stream, and download for free on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player.fm, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook, and YouTube. All we ask in return is for you to please spread the word about the show. Write us an Apple Podcast review and then let people know on Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and Pinterest and Instagram and Reddit and Snapchat and Twitch and TikTok. Anywhere you're social, on the web or with your phone, say, I'm a Washington Capitals fan. I listen to What the Puck and you should too. So that is pretty much it for the show this week. Let's go over the games until we talk again. On Wednesday, October 27th, the Caps are up against Detroit, up against the Red Wings. That game's at 7 o'clock. You can watch that uh, locally on NBC Sports Washington. Plus, no uh, no Jakub Verana. I th- he's still hurt, so we will not be seeing Verana back in the building, unfortunately. And then on Friday the 29th, the Capitals welcome the Coyotes to town that game's at seven o'clock and you can watch that one on nbc sports washington and then on monday the caps go down to sunny florida down to tampa up against the stanley cup champs you can watch that game on nbc sports washington it's a seven o'clock start up against the lightning and then coach dan and i will be back for our first show in november can you believe that it's already going to be november by this time next week it's crazy to think about really crazy uh, everybody out there, have a happy Halloween. Uh, enjoy yourself. Get some candy. I did a trunk or treat over the weekend. I made up 180 bags with my girlfriend of candy, and the trunk or treat had 2,000 kids there. Jesus. I did not prepare correctly. <laughs> and I had to empty out bags because, like, each bag, I wanted to keep things like COVID safe. I didn't want anybody to touch anybody else's candy. I didn't want, like, a hand in a bowl. So I was like, all right, everybody gets a mini Snickers, everybody gets a Dum Dum, and a bag of Sour Patch Kids. And then uh, halfway through, and I'm like, yep, we need to empty these bags out. So my girlfriend's giving out the candies, and then I'm like, no, give me give me a second, give me a second. This one's still got Dum Dums in it. Keep going, keep going. You got you to gotta, you gotta abort, you got to pivot, try something different. Let me tell you, I'm really happy. I wanted to be that guy that gave out full-size candy bars. I'm incredibly happy I did not go with that plan. Because <laughs> I was way done. Way more done. 
2,000 kids. It was insane. That, Absolutely insane. That is a lot. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for the show this week. Everybody, say it loud. Say it proud. Let's go. Caps. This has been a production of Brando Cash Entertainment. Music by DJ Wolfman. Voiceover by Sarah Jacks. For more information, go to brandocash.com. The Beijing organ organ I can't say this word. Let me try that again. The, the organizing. Ah, there we go. All right, Coach Stan, here we go. We're going around the NHL, but you and I were talking before the show even uh, started hitting the record button. But, ooh, what was that? Blah. <laughs> that was terrible. A button. Button. A button. <laughs>